We would have to end to all of you. We have met in another episode of Research Lounge today. Dear researchers, I am delighted to welcome all of you to the today's Research Lounge. We are going to start from zero. And uh, then once we cover all these things, I think you will be able to uh, learn a lot of things. I think you will be able to learn a lot of things new in this session. And uh, we have given uh, we have, uh, given a lot of resources uh, in our uh, website as well. So you can see that one also a lot and you can master this one further. Okay, uh, okay, thank you very much again for having us uh, and organizing this uh, research lounge. So, uh, so today, as Dr. Naina mentioned, today we are going to talk about uh, reproducible research with our markdown. Uh, so, all the materials that we are going to use during this session uh, will be available to our website. Uh, we have developed a, a, a website for this uh, session, uh, hello.hello.rnd.fi.f. Um, if you go to the website, let me show you the website first. Uh, okay, uh, maybe we, we will share the website and we will show you this website once we come to the materials. Okay, so before, um, before we jump into the real part of this session, uh, let me first introduce ourselves, who we are. So, as Dr. Naini mentioned, um, I'm Dr. Deva Kalagala, uh, and I'm senior lecturer uh, in the Department of Computational Mathematics, uh, University of Oregon. And uh, with me, um, I have Dr. Yanga Kalagala. Uh, she's uh, a senior lecturer in the Department of Statistics, uh, University of uh, Shuja Abhinapura. So, we both earned a uh, PhD from Monash University, Australia. And um, if you want to learn more about our projects, our research work, you can visit to our websites, uh, tianga.netify.f and pita.netify.f. And you can get more, more recent updates about our research work. You can also visit, uh, follow us uh, on Twitter or GitHub. Um, in addition to that, we also work as associate investigators of Australian Research Council Center of Excellence for Mathematics and Statistics Frontier. So ASIMS is one of the biggest um, data science communities in uh, Australia. Um, in addition to that, I'm also, work I'm also working as an associate editor for the R Journal. Uh, this is the main uh, journal published by the R Foundation. It's a Q1 journal at the ERA ranking is ASTAR. Um, in addition to that, uh, we are the co-founders and co-organizers of Our Ladies Kalampo. Uh, Our Ladies Kalampo is a global organization of, um, Our Ladies Kalampo is a local chapter of the global organization Our Ladies Global. Um, if you want to learn more about Our Ladies Global, you can visit to their website. So basically, uh, this Our Ladies Global is an organization that promotes the diet, but it's an international organization that promotes the diversity in our community worldwide. And um, the, actually, when it comes to this Our Ladies Global, there are 216 chapters from 61 countries, and there are more than 100,000 members in this um, global organization. And we actually took this photo when we went to France, and kind of do related event uh, conferences uh, unconferences meetups and so on um, and uh, we also got an opportunity to work with some leading uh, the de lead developers in the art community for example Hadley become uh, he's the chief scientist at our studio and uh, he's actually a frequent visitor he was a frequent visitor to our Monash research group this is our Monash research group and Professor Dai Cook, uh, he, she is the PhD supervisor of Hadley Wickham. So that's why he's a frequent visitor to our research research. And just to 
to our student like to our group. In addition to that, if you are very much into data science, you must, uh, you must uh, this is a very familiar figure in the data science community, Roger Peng. And if you are into time series and forecasting, here we have Dr. Professor Rob Heimann. He's our PhD supervisor, a well-known uh, professor in uh, time series and forecasting. So during all these events, during this experience, uh, we got an opportunity to learn a lot of things related to R and also we did some contributions to the R community as well. But during this experience, one thing that we noticed was, we noticed that the Asian representation in this community is very, very small. Because you know, uh, R is a very strong, active, dynamic community and uh, having a strong, Active community is very, very important uh, for us to learn new things. Uh, for us to learn new things. Okay, having active research community is very, very important for us to learn new things, to get opportunities. But what we, we noticed uh, during all these uh, events, we noticed that the Asian representation is really low. So, uh, our, here, um, the main focus of this uh, chapter, our ladies, Colombo, the main focus of this one is to improve the community, our community in Sri Lanka. And uh, through this organization, we um, conduct lots of uh, events. All the events that we, have, we conduct, there are three, so anyone can come and join us. With all those events, we, are, we talk a um, lot of things related to art. And, um, so, in addition to that, um, we are the main developers. We have several R packages on CRAN. That's the main uh, repository uh, for uh, R uh, related. That's the CRAN is the main repository that uh, keeps all the softwares with R softwares. Um, so we are the uh, so we have developed uh, several R packages. We are the main developers and maintainers. So these are packages. Yeah, selected some of the R packages that we have on CRAN. Uh, if the, there are certain packages that we cannot find uh, Hexica, so but you can find all those information related to our way. Um, okay, before we jump into the real part, we also have a part of conduct uh, whenever we do a workshop. So this workshop series is dedicated to provide a harassment free experience for everyone. Um, you can learn more about our part of conduct during the workshop website. Okay, so that's all about us. Um, so now I'm coming to the real part of this uh, uh, session. Uh, so we, today we are going to learn uh, how to do reproducible research using R Markdown. But before that, let's see why we learn R. So R Markdown is a package that comes under R. So the question is why we learn R? What's the importance of learning R, R and Python? So someone might think, okay, why do we need why do we need to learn R? There are Python users, they might think, okay, what's the purpose of learning another language? And what's the purpose of learning R? But so previously, in the past, normally um, uh, we have this, there was a competition between these two communities, R and Python. Most of the time they could not live in harmony. Uh, sometimes, most of the time, the users, R users and Python users, these two communities, they thought that their choice of language is superior to the other. So uh, now, now the data science community, there are, data, there are people in the data science community who use both R and Python. And that's actually the need of the present job market as well. So recently, Dianga, she's the coordinator of statistical consultant service in the Sri Lanka. Her team recently did a, a, a survey to identify what skills and qualifications are required for data science related job. And they considered lots of uh, uh, job vacancies uh, published in um, different different countries. They have considered several uh, several job job advertisements, and. From that survey, they had identified some top skills required for data science jobs. And among these top skills, you can see among the five top skills, we have Python, SQL, communication, R, and machine learning. So the R is among the top five skills that you need uh, for a data science job. Now you might think, okay, we have Python, why do we need to go for R? So as I mentioned earlier, 
previously, the discussions were mostly about art versus writer. But now, um, it's no longer art versus Python. Now people talk about art and Python. And there are users who use both art and Python. And that's actually the need of the present job market because I have some evidence. Now, through that survey, they had identified that you, there's a high chance of getting a data science job, a high chance of getting a good offer if you know both R and Python instead of just you know two different company, two different software, so you can get all those things and you can incorporate those tools to your research. You can, you can by using those tools, you can improve your research work. And another thing is um, our studio also try to um, work. Uh, try to incorporate both languages to their work. And uh, today we are going to the tidy workflow. So I just mentioned about this word data science. If you involve it, now most of you are working with, whenever you do a research, it, it involves data. You, you get data, you analyze that data to identify the uh, findings. So whenever you work with data or whenever you work with a data science project, these are the main steps that you need to follow. First, you need to import your data to a data science platform. And then sometimes you might need to tidy up your data before going for the analysis. And then comes to the most important part. This is where the magic happen. So sometimes uh, before going for the modeling approach, you sometimes need to do some transformations. Uh, sometimes uh, your data can contain some missing values or it can contain some outliers so sometimes you might have to use some data imputation methods sometimes the researchers think okay that's the end of their uh, uh, data science work no there's one more step a very important step it's not enough to do the research you have to communicate your results of your research and that's what we are going to discuss uh, during this session uh, we Today, during this session, we are going to discuss how our markdown can uh, can be helpful for this aspect, data communication, resource communication. Okay, when it comes to research uh, communication, that's a very important thing that you need to consider. Research reproducible. A paper that you can read. Uh, this is a nice paper that talks about reproducible research. What does research reproducibility means. You can, uh, this paper is available to this, uh, this was published in this journal, Science Translation Medicine, a Q1 journal. Now, according to this, the reproducible research, what do you mean by a reproducible research? Why we talk about this? Reproducibility refers to the ability of researcher to duplicate the result of a prior study using the same materials. It can be data, the software code, as were used by the original investigator. And then that is a second researcher might use the same raw data to build the same analysis files and implement the same statistical analysis in an attempt to yield the same results. So basically, now this actually allows you to improve the trustworthiness of your results. Actually, initially, uh, Professor Kleber, uh, Professor John introduced this word, mainly focusing on the transparency of your research. And according to the US National Science Foundation Subcommittee on Reproducibility, reproducibility is a minimum requirement, necessary condition for a finding to be believable. Because there are researchers who do the job. Now, okay, reproducible research is important. So what we are going to discuss during this session, what are, what are the things that we are going to discuss during this session and how you can get, how you can incorporate things that we are going to discuss during this session to your research. Okay, let's think about your traditional approach of writing reports. This workshop is all about writing research, research reports. So when it comes to the traditional approach, uh, normally what you do is you import data uh, to a, a software package and you run the procedure to get results. Uh, then you copy and paste the appropriate pieces. Uh, most of the time, this, this involves manual work. And sometimes you have to copy and paste all these results that from a different platform to a new platform. It can be a Word document. So in such situations, there can, you, can, you can make mistakes. And another thing is sometimes when you try to copy and paste these results to a new document, there are, sometimes you will forget to um, 
uh, record all the steps that you follow. And there are situations where once you submit to uh, your author to a journal, sometimes you will get review comments. But in such situations, you sometimes there are situations where you have to redo your work. So if you don't have your previous score, then it can lead to a problem. What if you made an error at the beginning of your analysis? Then again, it can uh, lead to an error. So your traditional method allows you to produce a report, but it can lead to many different problems. And that's what we can, um, that's something that we are going to address through this new tool that we are going to discuss, the R program. And the research reproducibility, reproducibility crisis, this is a very big topic in the current research community. And um, since we don't have enough time, I'm going to uh, move on to the next session. So basically, when it comes to research reproducibility, there are three aspects. Method reproducibility, resource reproducibility, and information reproducibility. Uh, during this session, uh, we are going to mainly discuss about the method reproducibility, the things that we are going to learn during this session will be very useful for you to address the first part method reproducibility. Okay, so uh, there are some tweets. So basically during this session, our main topic is R markdown. There are some tweets about this R markdown. One thing that I, I maybe you can go through these slides later. One thing that I want to highlight is now R markdown is um, R software. So sometimes if we have any Python users here in this audience, you might think, okay, I know Jupyter is not good, so why should I learn this one? But here I have some evidence. So this is Jake Vanderplas. Um, he's the author of Python Data Science Handbook. He has written this handbook. And now here he has given, he, so here he mentioned, I also wrote my recent book in Jupyter Notebooks. I would say it's the best option for form formal publishing. I, I prefer something closer to our markdown data. So this is the, our main topic, and you can see even the Python users are very much into this R markdown. They are also um, highlighting points of having these additional features that are available in our markdown. And here we have some more tweets, more tweets about uh, some advantages related to our markdown. Okay, so. I think I give you enough motivation to learn uh, to um, this today's topic. So now you know how to take down notes, you know how to do all these things. Take down, not down, write down, check down. And today you are going to learn one more skill, how to do it. Um, now I'm going to give this to Dianga. She will continue with the next part. All right, everyone, I hope you all can hear me clearly. Okay, so first of all, I thank everyone for inviting us to the workshop, uh, to the webinar, and it's a pleasure to be here. So through this talk, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach, I'm going to illustrate how to document your work using our markdown. Actually, if you look at our, our today's uh, webinar website, it is purely written based on R markdown. And if you look at the slides uh, for the uh, webinar today, they are all written on base, uh, written based on R markdown. So in order to use R markdown, first of all, you need to install two software packages, two software. One is R software, the other one is R studio software. R is the programming language, and R Studio provides an interface to R. Sometimes it is referred to as IDE, Integrated Development Environment. So in addition to that, in order to work with R Markdown, you need to install, once you have installed R and R Studio, you need to install these two packages, R Markdown and Meta. Don't worry if you do not get the things right now, because on our course website, we have given you the live videos on how to install these software packages and the other things like that. Uh, these are the two main packages that I need for my art markdown webinar. In addition to that, you will see some plots um, on my slides. Uh, so I did a little bit of data science uh, in order to illustrate some, a few things. For that, I use a tidyverse package. Um, I'll come to the reticulate package later. 
So if you first open R through R Studio, uh, this is the window that you look at. So you can see mainly three uh, panes here. So this one up here is called the console. So this is where the place that you're going to execute your commands. In R, actually, there are three ways that you can write the code. One is you can directly write your codes on the console like this. And in order to get the output, what you need to do is you have to press enter. If it is a plot, you will get the output of the plotting path. And if, if it is, if the output is a text-based output, for example, let's say summary statistics like mean, variance, and standard deviation, you will get the output on the console itself. Okay, the second approach is what you can do is you can use a script file to write your code. In order to write our code using a script file, first of all, you need to open a script file. For that, you can use file, new file, R script. You will get a notebook like this. And here you can write the code. So in order to get the output, what you need to do is you have to pass this one into the console. So for that, you can highlight this one and press the run button up here. And then it will go to the console and console will explain console will execute your code and give the corresponding output. So you can see we learn two things. Actually, the programming is like cooking. So when you think about cooking, you can directly go and cook, up, cook some dish. Or else what you could do is you can write the recipe first and after that you can do the cooking. So here also our script file is also like your recipe book. The advantage is here, if you want to reproduce the same result, now you have the, your recipe or the things that you need to cook or the steps here. Otherwise, if, of course, you can directly go and run the codes on console, but if you want to reproduce it, you will struggle to remember the steps. And the next one is ideally, we want to have the codes and the outputs all organized in one document like this. Earlier, we had the code uh, in a separate file and the outputs in a separate file. But we need everything organized in a one document like this. This is where our markdown comes into play. Sometimes, not only that, you need to add some titles. Or else, if you're working with some collaborators, you want to add a description like this. So you can see this R output file is generated based on this R markdown document. So in order to produce this output file, I do all of my codings and writing on top of the R markdown document. Furthermore, you can add uh, you can um, add tabs like this in order to make it more visually appealing. If you enlarge the document, you will see it like this. And so again, this document is produced based on this R markdown document. Okay, now you have got a very uh, brief idea about uh, the R markdown. So now let's see how to create your first R markdown document. So I have, again, I want to remind you that I have given a live video, but I will just show you the uh, steps uh, in order to make the completion. So what you need to go is you just need to open R through R Studio. Then in order to open a script file, you visited file new file R script. But now what we are doing is we're going to file new file R markdown. Then you will get a window like this. So you can give a title to your document and you can mention the name of the author. And it you want to have your output file as a HTML document, like our website or like our today's slides, you can select HTML. And if you want to produce, if you want to get the output file as a PDF document, you can select PDF. And if you want to generate a Word document based on our markdown, you can select the th uh, third option. 
in order to generate a Word document, you need to have MS Word. And in order to produce a PDF document, if you are a Windows user, you need to have Mac text. If you are a uh, Linux user, you need to have text slides. And if you're a Mac user, you have to use Mac text. You have to use some supporting text distributor. So in this case, I'm gonna um, select a HTML. And then you have to click OK. Then you will get an R Markdown document like this. So this R Markdown document is pre-populated with some text. And this is the R Markdown document. This is not the one that we want. We want the associated output file. In order to get the output file, what you need to do is you have to click on the Neat button. When you click on Neat button, when you click that for the first time, you will be asked to save the document and you have to specify a location to save the document. And then you will get the uh, output file. So this, um, uh, this document, this HTML output file is completely generated based on the initial R Markdown document, based on this R Markdown document. Uh, and if you want to enlarge, you can enlarge the document. You can click on the small button up here and you will get the window. Uh, you will get the output file in a separate window. Uh, so uh, here I have given a live video. Uh, you can play it uh, and you can follow the, all of the steps to create your first art markdown document or to get the template of the art markdown document. And if we look at the workflow, this is what happens. Uh, we have an R markdown, and there's a package called Neat R in R that converts the R markdown file into a markdown file. Then the pandoc will convert uh, the markdown file into the uh, corresponding output format. If it is PDF, you will get a PDF output. If it is HTML, you get the HTML. Um, uh, if you select Word, you get the Word. Uh, so this is a nice cartoon uh, uh, created by Alison Host, a data scientist, uh, illustrating this process. So you can see the ingredients for the art markdown document is a text or art code or figures or images, usually the things that you incorporate into a piece. This produces the R markdown document, and then later it's converted into markdown, and finally converted into the associated output file. Okay. Uh, so we learned how to create your first R markdown document. Now let's see how to customize this document. So this is the default document, is pre-populated with uh, some text. Uh, actually, this is not the content that we want to have in the R Markdown document. Now let's see how to customize this one. So what you can do is you can delete all the everything after this uh, neat R command. You can delete everything, just highlight it and press the button delete. And then if you press the button in always in order to get the output file based on the R Markdown document, you always need to hit the Knit button. So now when I hit the Knit button, you can see now I, I don't get the content. I'm getting only the creating an R Markdown document, which is my typo. And the next one, the author and the output type is HTML document. So if you want, actually, you can delete the title and author as well. Uh, you can see these three options are bounded by uh, three dashes. Uh, I, mean, I will come to this one later. Uh, but you can't delete the output type. Output HTML document, you should put that in your R markdown document, but you can't delete the title. You can delete title and author if you want, then you will get a blank document. Okay, now let's see how to include the title to the R Markdown document. So in order to include the title, what you should need to do is hashtag white space and the title. So you can see, you know, this is data visualization, one data visualization, it is generated to a title like this. Uh, if you want to include a text, you just need to write some text here 
and always in order to get the output press on the button meet up then you will get the text here similarly if you want to get the subheading what you need to do is you have to put two hashtags followed by uh, two hashtags uh, white space and the title so you can see when you use two hashtags, it becomes the subheading of the main section. And you can see the font size is much smaller than uh, the previous title. So hashtag can be used to control the size of the titles as well. And again, if you, uh, uh, again, if you want, you can uh, include uh, some text, uh, and let's see how to create, uh, uh, how to include an R code to your document. So when it comes to a thesis or a publication, you have some text and also you have some results that you obtain after analyzing the data. So in order to include an R code, what you need to do is, uh, so what? So these are some of the ways that you can customize the heading. So, uh, so here I have given the R markdown code and these are the output parts. Uh, so I'm moving to the, uh, so this is about the how to do the text formatting. Uh, if you use, uh, if you enclose the text uh, within single asterisk, then it will become italic. Or if you include the text uh, within uh, underscore, single underscore, again, it becomes italic. If you want to bold the text, what you need to do is you have to enclose the entire phrase within a double asterisk. If you want to strike the, the uh, text, uh, you can enclose the entire phrase, uh, phrase within double tilde marks. Okay, now let's see how to include an R code. You, let's suppose you're writing a paper, you wrote, wrote the introduction, and then you come to the data analysis part, now you need to input, incorporate your results. The usual thing is you do the copy and pasting, but we don't do the copy and pasting here. We try to keep everything uh, within, the, uh, within our document. Okay, for that, what you need to do is, now that it goes straight. So here, what you need to do is, in order to open an R code on R markdown, view, R markdown document, here you have to type three dash signs and curly braces. Within that, you have to type simple R. And after that, you have to, this is called a R code chunk. This is the place that where you're going to write your R code. When you write something within the code chunk, R knows that this is a code that should be executed and produce results. If it's not to write something outside a code chunk, it is considered as a plain text. So three dashes, curly braces, a little R, and you have to, in order to close the chunk, you have to uh, again close it with using three dashes. Or sometimes you call it as back teams. So you can see, uh, the, uh, immediately when you type three dashes, curly braces, simple R, the R markdown will automatically change the background color. In case, this case, it changed this background to the uh, a, a gray color. So when you run, the, when you need the code, when you need the code, when you need the document, um, you will get the R uh, code here and you will get the plot underneath that. Uh, so here the, the image is still loading. So if you go to the original slides, you can see here you have the R code and here you have the plot. Okay. Another thing is that you can do is, uh, so if you need the button, you will get the associated output file. If you want to get the output on the R markdown document itself, what you need to do is you have to click on this small uh, green arrow. So when you click the green arrow, it will uh, this uh, green bar uh, shows R. Once it completed the process, uh, this will disappear. So now, instead of having your plot uh, on the output file, you will get the plot on the R markdown itself. So there are two things I mentioned 
So if you need the whole document, need the R map down, you'll get the associated output file. If you want to get to the quick idea about the associated graph, you don't need to do, need the whole document. You can just run that whole chunk by clicking on this icon. Yeah, so now you can see the, the entire code is executed, so you can't see the green bar here. So this is the original plot, you will get the original plots like this. Let's talk about, so we learned a few things. We learned how to create an R Markdown document and then how to customize R Markdown document. Basically, we learned how to include the text and R code and how to produce the output. Now let's see how to, uh, now let's uh, identify the main components of the R Markdown document. Uh, the first component is the code chunk. Uh, so so you will see the R code here, the associated output file is here. So this part is called an R code chunk. Uh, next component that we have is the text. Uh, so we have the text here, and the, this is the associated output. It's just like typing on a Word document. And the next one is YAML. And YAML is the one on the top, which is bounded by the three dashes. Actually, this section controls the entire appearance of your uh, output file. For example, in this case, you can see the output type is HTML document. So here you will get an HTML output file. If you set that to a PDF document here, now I have I have selected here, I have entered output a PDF underscore document. Now, if you need this art markdown document, you will get a PDF document like this. And if you go to the, uh, if you want to produce a word output file, what you need to do is you have to type here word underscore document then you will get a Word document like this. So the text is just the plain text, then R code and the uh, and the YAML controls the entire appearance of the book. Okay, so we learned how to include a simple R code, but let's see how to, uh, how to customize the appearance of the output. For example, suppose I want to reduce the size of the plots. For that, you can use chunk options. There are many chunk options. One is fig.width and the other one is fig.height. So here I said earlier, I just used simple R. Now I put the additional options Fig dot height equals three, fig dot width equals three. Always you put the curly, uh, chunk options within these curly braces. Now you can see the size of the figure is much smaller than the default size. Uh, in order to see the difference here, I have created another one, fig dot width five, fig dot height five. Uh, if you run this one, you will see the second figure is much bigger than the earlier one. Uh, the second chunk option I'm going to uh, illustrate is eval. Uh, so uh, the eval, we can do pass two parameters. One is eval equals true. The other one is eval equals false. So if you pass here eval equals true, then it will evaluate your code and produce the output. Basically, it executed the code and produced the output file. If you use eval equals false, then it won't produce the output. But on the R markdown document, you will get the code, but it won't be evaluated. You won't get the uh, output document.
you will get the code here, but uh, here this is not visible. Uh, if you load this one uh, later on your doc, uh, uh, sometimes you might be able to see it on your uh, uh, computers if you go to the original slides. These are some other chunk options that you can use. Uh, eval includes echo uh, messages, uh, comment and name. For example, here if you use comment equals and if you uh, if you just use default R, if it is a text output, uh, in front of the output you will get these hashtags. If you want to remove the hashtags, what you can do is you can pass the chunk option comment equals N. So here you won't get the uh, hashtags. Another advantage uh, with R Markdown is you can also type LaTeX equations on R Markdown. If you want to get uh, some LaTeX equations in line, what you need to do is you have to type the LaTeX equation, the same syntax that you use in LaTeX, you have to enclose it with a single dollar sign. So you can see here mu, this mu is produced here into the Greek letter mu. And here you can see the sigma and the Greek letter sigma here. If you want to get the equation in a separate line, what you need to do is you have to enclose the LaTeX equation within double dollar sign. So single dollar sign for line in uh, uh, equation in line and double dollar signs to uh, have it in a separate line. Uh, if you are not familiar with how to type the Greek letters and the LaTeX syntax, yeah, I have written a blog post uh, uh, of those things, so you can, so you can check it out uh, from my website. Now let's see how to style your art markdown document. And I told you, YOML is the section to control the appearance of the art markdown document. So in order to style your R markdown document, you can use some additional options under the job. So earlier, if you go to the slides, you can see I use output HTML underscore document. Now in addition to that, here I use TOC true. And you can see now I have a table of content here. So in order to get the table of content, you can just use TOC true. And you need to be very careful with, uh, with uh, aligning these lines. So here we have one tab, and here we have two tabs. Uh, if you uh, uh, if you if you uh, put unnecessary white space, uh, then it will produce some errors. Indenting is very important when it comes to work with your. Uh, furthermore, if you want to get the table of content. Uh, uh, to the left of your main document. So you can use another option, TOC underscore true, uh, uh, TOC underscore float true. So you will get the table of content uh, left, uh, uh, left to the main document. So if you click that, you will get the subheadings under that. Uh, if you enlarge the entire output files, the appearance is like this. Uh, next one, Actually, here when I type the R markdown to, uh, doc, document sections, I manually number the headings. But you don't need to do that. You can automate that process by using number underscore sections. So here I use one hashtag, so that I have one data visualization. Here I have double hashtag, so R automatically reads it as a subheading under the data visualization. Uh, next one, if you want, you can also add themes to your R Markdown document. Here I use theme darkly. So now instead of white background, I have a black background. If you want to change the appearance of the R codes, uh, but you can do this. You can uh, put highlight. Uh, the theme is just to control the entire document. If you just want to customize uh, the appearance of the art code, 
tools, you can use highlight option and you can assign a theme, whatever the theme that you like. Uh, so now in this case, I use highlight expression, so you can see uh, now my codes are core functions, they turn into blue color. So these are some of the themes that you can use, and these are some of the themes that you can use to customize the appearance of the artworks. Uh, if you want, you can also create tabbed sections like this. For example, here I have two tabs, a scatter plot, and if you go to the next tab, you can see a box plot. So again, this is very easy, uh, big R markdown. All you need to do is, under the, here the main heading is data visualization, and here you have to include curly braces dot tab set, so it will arrange all of these sub subsections as tabs rather than one underneath the uh, previous sections. Now we get the content as steps like this. Um, if you want, you can also include uh, LaTeX tables here. Uh, just the same for, uh, it's very, uh, it's the same as the, the original LaTeX table code. Uh, if you need the file, you will get the LaTeX tables as well. If you doc, uh, load the whole document, you will get the output. Uh, for example, uh, if you want, you can also include LaTeX packages uh, into the R Markdown uh, document uh, like this. For example, uh, I created all of my post outlines using this R Markdown document. Um, it's, furthermore, you can include images. Uh, you can save the image to the same location that you use uh, to save the R markdown file. And then uh, uh, exclamation mark square bracket name of the image, then you will get the image. Uh, image. Uh, if you need the file, you will get the image in the output file. So another advantage with uh, R Markdown is you can also put Python codes into R Markdown. For that, first of all, you need to install this reticulate package. So in this case, in order to include Python codes to R Markdown, what you need to do is you have to open a Python uh, code chunk. The same as the way that we did for the R uh, code chunks. When you're using R code chunks, you, you put your tactics curly braces within that you, you write R. If it is a Python code, instead of simple R, you simply need to write Python. Then you can write the Python codes within this code chunk. Of the Python codes, uh, so here this is an R code and this is a Python code. Uh, Another advantage with our markdown document is to create uh, parameterized R markdown documents. Uh, for example, suppose you are writing a letter and you want to send the letter to uh, a few people and you want to change the name, the same content, but you just need to change their name. So for example, here, um, I want to produce a report for, uh, here I want to type group one. Uh, if, I send, if I'm sending this to the group one, I want to have the title as report for group one. And if I want to send it to another group, the second group, I want to have the title for the report group two. So what you can do is, here you have to put params and the name of the parameter and the value of the parameter. So when you need this one, now you, are the, you use, instead of pressing the need button, now you are using need with parameters. Then when you uh, press that one, you have to include the parameter here. If it is for a group one, you can put one here. Now you can see the uh, contents is report for one. And if you run this again, need with parameters, and now if you include group two, then you will get the title as a report for two. You don't need to copy and paste into the multiple documents. You can just maintain one single R markdown and produce uh, any number of uh, 
any number of inputs. This is very useful when it comes to the uh, when it comes to online examinations. For, because for different students, they give you different different data sets. So you can easily produce, if you have 100 students with this, you can produce, easily produce 100 different papers. Okay, so these are a few other advances of uh, our markdown. Uh, Priyanka will talk more about these things. I will just uh, 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 illustrate, so give you some examples. If you want, you can create research posters using our markdown. Furthermore, if you want, you can create PowerPoint presentations using our markdown. Here, you can see, you just need to here specify PowerPoint underscore presentation. Now, instead of getting a HTML document, you will get the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, thank you, Tiana. So, I hope now you are familiar with all the basics related to our markdown. Now we are going to see some extensions of this R markdown, what you can do um, using this knowledge that you've gained throughout this session. If you're going to our website, uh, here under, okay, now you learn uh, during the previous session, you learned how to produce a, a report using R markdown. And here we are now from here onward, we are going to learn some extended versions of this R markdown package that will allow you to do various additional stuff. So first I'm going to talk about how to use this knowledge, how to produce a reproducible thesis with this R markdown that you just learned. So for this, now as Tiana mentioned here, now we are going to learn a new package called Bookdown that is actually an open source R package to facilitate writing uh, and uh, books and long form articles, um, reports with R Markdown. This Bookdown package is based on R Markdown package. And here, uh, this is what uh, this what you can see here. It's my thesis. Actually, when I, I wrote my entire thesis using R Markdown, that means my entire PhD thesis is a reproducible report. And having that that type of report is very, very important so that you can show the transfer, you, you can improve the transparency of your work. Okay, so now look down. This is not what I'm going to discuss today. I'm going to introduce you to a new package called This is Down. This is Down is actually based on this big book down package, which is based on the DAR package. But if you want to learn more about the book down package, that, that book down package allows you to write reports, write books. So you can visit to this website where there's an e-copy of this book. You can learn a lot, lot of things related to book down. So with that, I'm coming directly to our main topic, how to write a thesis using R markdown. Now they have developed a new package called thesis DAO. Uh, this is actually inspired by the book down package. So here, using this package, you can write your own thesis without putting much effort to that work. So here, basically, uh, in order to do this one, to compile PDF documents using R, you are going to need LaTeX install. Uh, you can easily uh, install LaTeX um, to your R environment using this install package, TinyTech and R markdown. And then after that, you also need to install both Bookdown and Thesis Down in order to write your reports using Thesis Down. So again, you can write, you can install these two packages using these two commands. Um, now, once you install all those packages, you need to do one thing. You may need to restart our studio um, and then, then you will be able to get the required features once you log into our studio again. So what you can do is, now let's see how to write a thesis, how to write a thesis using this R markdown. So initially, if you can remember, Tianga used file, new file, R markdown, but now you don't have to do that one. File, now what you need to do is you need to go for file, new project, new directory. If you follow this path, if you will be able, if you have installed thesis down correctly, you will be able to see this option, thesis project using thesis down. And then you will, it will bring you to this, uh, this one, this tab. So where you have to give a name for your thesis. That's where you are going to save all your documents related to the thesis and you need to find the location. And then once you click, okay, um, uh, create project, then you need to create, 
uh, create project, then it will create a new folder. Uh, here I have selected desktop. On my desktop, it will create a new folder with all these files. And now these are the files that you require, that you need in order to produce your thesis. So there are some important files. You now here basically the index tree RMD that contains the YAML. If you can remember the animation, that's where you can take the full control of the appearance of your work. And also these are these are the chapters. You have you are going to maintain a separate RMD file for your for the different different chapters. If you have more than five chapters, you can incorporate that include new RMD files or markdown files. And here another important thing is you also need to have a big file where you can keep all your metadata related to the references so this big folder will contain all the big files and then once you get that one you don't have to do anything um, you just open the index rmd you can in, in, you can uh, first open the project using this our uh, project file and then you can open the index rmd and then just hit need. Then it will introduce, it will need a new, a new, uh, new, it will create the thesis. Now here you have got an example thesis. Now it will contain all these different pages. You can visit to this website and see the output. It will contain all the important things that you need in your thesis. It will contain that management page, table of content, and everything. So that's very easy so you can even customize these uh, pieces and if you go to this one there are they have also introduced different uh, uh, this is uh, formats for different different universities if you go to this website here you can see for example but if you want to see the Oxford, the thesis the template for the Oxford University, they, based on this thesis down package, they have created their own uh, thesis template and this is the thesis template for Stanford. So likewise, um, they have created several thesis templates. This is the thesis template for Washington. Uh, likewise, there are University of Washington. If you want to see the thesis template here, you can go to this one. So that's something that we are working right now. So coming soon, still, this is a very, we are at the very beginning of this project. We are going to write our own thesis using our markdown or a thesis down so that you can directly use our template. Basically, our target is to uh, come up with a more thesis template following all the guidelines given by given in this document. Okay, so I think uh, now you know how to write a thesis using our markdown. Basically, we use the package thesis stuff. And now let's see how to uh, now. This is not the only document that you are going to produce through your research. There are situations where you need to write articles. So now let's see how you can use our markdown to produce articles. Again, you need all the basics that Yanga discussed uh, during her session. And now when it comes to, if you want to write an article, then there's a pack separate package called article, which is again based on our markdown. So article package provides a suite of custom R uh, markdown Latin formats and templates for authoring um, general, general articles and conference submissions. So again, a very easy thing. Again, I'll first show you some examples. Normally, when we do all our research, when we write our articles, we use, we use R markdown to write all our general articles. This is one article that was published. This is one of my articles that was published in a journal of computational and graphical statistic it's a uh, q1 journal era ranking and stuff again now when i submit my uh, whenever we write a paper we submit both the output the final paper and the source code so that will improve the reproducibility of our work and that's and that is sometimes actually the requirement of the journal as well now according to this journal here it says authors are expected to submit codes and data sets as online supplement supplements uh, to the ministry so sometimes it's actually a requirement from the journal that you get from the journal so in such situations this r markdown is very very useful because you don't have to rewrite your codes in a separate document you write all your codes, you put your, all your, you have all your outputs in the same document and you get this nice output from the required template. And this is another example, another uh, uh, 
paper that I published um, in another two one journal again ERA ranking is ESTA. This is a water quality water resources research, and actually now this is one refer ref uh, comment that I got from one of the reviewers. So I applaud the authors for making the codes available in GitHub and for including the data sets used in this paper along with their codes. That's a nice touch. So you can even you can see even the reviewers notice the effort that you put into your research, and um, they also acknowledge uh, they also appreciate the effort that you put in order to support the reproducibility of the author. So with all these uh, examples, I'm coming to the real part. How to now? Let's see how you can write your own um, research paper using this article package, which is based on our partner. Again, a very you have to do a very very simple thing. You install our pack, uh, uh, article package, and now once you install that one, there are different templates according to the uh, 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 according to uh, uh, the journal that you want to submit. For example, in this article package, for example, if you want to submit that to Association for Computing Machinery ACM Journal, then this is the uh, then, then you, you have a template for that. And if you want, if you want to uh, submit anything to Elsevier Journal, or if you want to uh, submit anything to IEEE Journals, then again you have different templates. So there are lots of customized templates for different different journals. Just Journal, so like the Royal Statistical Society Journal, so plus one template so you can get access to many different templates through this article package so again what you need to do is if you can remember previously the other use this part you have file new file you now get our markdown document once you come to that one now you will select from templates you go to this tab and then once you go there you will get this uh, your window where you can see the required journal that you want to submit, that you're planning to submit. So you here, for example, now if I want to write a journal to journal of open source software art, then you select the required template, give the name and the location, then it will create this type of a folder that carries several package, several uh, important documents. So basically this is the RMD file that you where you are going to put all your source code and the information and also this is the big file where you have all the references and then again what you need to do is just hit the read button and now we feel you will get an example code here then it will produce this type of thing and another example is now here then the RMD file, but once you need that file, you will get these additional documents. Now here I have my PDF document as well. And this is another example. If you want to submit to an IEEE journal, just select IEEE transaction journal. And then once you need the document, it will give you the output here in the required template. So very easy. It's just a unique, it's just a matter of knowing all the days it's related to our markdown, and then you need to have the uh, uh, install all these additional packages, then you can easily generate the required. Okay, so that is papers. Now you learn how to write theses, you learn how to uh, write uh, manuscripts. Now sometimes there are situations where you need to go and present your work at conferences. So let's see how you can use our markdown to present your work. Yanga briefly mentioned about this in her session. So basically what you need to do is, now for this one, first let's see, there are two ways of producing presentations using R markdown. First I'll show you the basic method that where you can use R markdown package and then produce uh, slides. So what you need to do is again, you use the same part that you used previously, file new part R markdown. Now we are going to uh, create a presentation. So you use presentation, and then here, it's also allowed you to generate different different outputs. HTML outputs, if you want uh, Latin uh, uh, kind of uh, slides, then you can select PDF, and you can even generate PowerPoint slides as well. So you first, you need to select the required output format, and then you can save that, and then you just need to hit the new button. And then you can actually change the content. Here you get example uh, code, then you can see the output first. You can see the generated output, and then you can 
change the content according to your research. So first, if you want to get so Beamer presentations allows you to get LaTeX. Um, allows you to get slides that have uh, that are very similar uh, to LaTeX uh, uh, generated uh, outputs. And if you want to get an HTML output, you have to do a very simple thing. Just go to Neat button and using this drop down menu, you can just you need to select need to html so from the same code it will allow you to generate html slides if you want to get from the same code if you want to get powerpoint presentations just uh, save this output as powerpoint presentations then from the same code you can generate a powerpoint presentation so it's a very easy thing now sometimes uh, your supervisor will need uh, an editable version of your work, and if he's not familiar with our content, then you can produce this one and pass that to your supervisor. So that's one way to produce presentation. There's another way to do that one using another extended version for sharing. Them. All the slides that we use in this uh, in this uh, section we generated using sharing them. So now what you need to do is first install sharing them. And then again, you go to our markdown. And now from the template, you, you can select <coughs> media presentation. And then you can get uh, output similar to what you can see here in these slides. OK, so now we learn how to use our markdown to generate theses. We learn how to use our markdown to generate articles. And we learn how to uh, use our markdown to generate uh, slides. So another thing is now blogging. So if you think about now, we now another thing as researchers, I think you always need to improve the visibility of your work. Research, uh, your visibility online presence is also very, very important because once you are done with your research, then you are going to enter the work work. So in order to get good efforts, it's always important to improve the visibility. So let's see how you can improve that aspect, how our markdown can help you uh, uh, to do that one. So that's an extended version, extended package for lockdown, again, based on our markdown. So research blogging is a very, very important thing that it be the first option is sometimes you find it a little bit difficult to create your own websites, but you don't have to worry about it now because now you know all the basics related to our markdown. So it's very simple to create your own blog using lockdown. Again, this is based on lockdown, the R markdown. And another thing here, the website that we use, or if you already have a blog using WordPress or anything, any other platform, then how can you migrate from that platform to this lockdown? All these things are discussed in detail in this text. So now, so using this, this lockdown, you can um, publish your work through your own website. Okay, so one important thing for finally, I want you to now we learn um, how to use our markdown. First, we learn how, uh, how to use our, our markdown to write reports, we produce the reports, and then we learn how we can use the same tool to write your own thesis, to write articles, to write uh, your press, to create your presentation slides, and also to create your blogs, websites. Finally, I would like to introduce you to some one of the latest development of our studio called Quarto. I'll give you a brief introduction to this. So basically, Quarto, our studio recently announced a new platform called, called Quarto, a new scientific and technical publishing system. Basically, this is very similar to our markdown, the thing that you just learned. Um, the only difference is now Quarto will contain some additional features uh, uh, that are not available in our markdown. And then another thing is the other Quarto is our studio still to bring our markdown to everyone. You know, our markdown is specifically for our users, but now uh, this uh, our studio. Uh, trying to allow the other communities, other users from other communities like Python, Julia, to allow them to get the benefit of this R markdown. And that's what they try to do this, to this quarter. Basically, quarter combines the functionalities of R markdown. So basically, 
Um, the goal of Quarto is to make the process of creating and collaborating on scientific and technical documents dramatically better. And if you use more than one language or you are multilingual team, you, you're working with a team that uses multiple language, then you can move to Quarto instead of R Markdown. But again, it's very similar to um, R Markdown. The, thing, uh, the only difference is now you can get a part of that, a part of a document. You can get access to this new platform to our studio. You just need to go file, new file, part of document. And again, you and now the advantage is it will allow you to get from our mountain, you were able to generate PDF documents, PowerPoint documents, and HTML documents, but with part of it will allow you to generate a different outputs. So I just wanted to introduce you to Cardo. Cardo, it was recently introduced by our studio, so uh, there's a long way to go. They recently re uh, released the first version of this platform. So, uh, but um, it will take some time for you to see all these additional features that you get through this R markup. But it's a good thing for other users, Python users and Julia, or Python users and other the, and the researchers who are working in other software platforms, don't worry. You get all these features, you're going to get all these features that you get through this R markdown, through this new platform, Quarto. Okay, so you can learn more about this Quarto for now with these slides. Um, so with that, I think, yes, you can follow these slides in order to learn more about uh, this Quarto platform. But I just wanted you to introduce you to this platform because that's something that we are going to learn in the future. And that's something that will allow you to get a lot of our features to another platform. Yes, that's basically uh, what we wanted to discuss mainly through this session. Yes, sir. thank you so much for the rich and valuable content and your valuable ideas. Uh, so, dear student, this is the time for you. You may have different questions to ask. You can raise any questions here. Madam, if I want to self study, uh, where can we find some additional resources to uh, master these things? Okay, so uh, that's something that we have actually. I'm going to mention about that one. So if you are new to now, we today we do this session, we introduce you to several R packages. But if you want to learn more about these things, you can go to the last section of this website. Uh, if you go to the second page, uh, there we have the additional Madam, could you go through the chat line? Okay, okay, yes, I'll come to that one. But before that, if I answer your question, oh, yeah. yes. Um, so if you uh, if you come to the last tab, there we have given lots of additional resources so that you can learn a lot of things related to R and R markdown. And here, this is the first uh, website. This is this website. We actually have conducted several R related workshops, and all our workshop materials can you can get access to those workshop materials through this website. In addition to that, R is a well documented uh, software, so there are lots of uh, sporting materials that allows you to do self-learning. So here we have given we have given you some e uh, ebooks that allows you to learn more about R and R related things. Um, so there is, there is one question uh, in the chat, which is the best R markdown on X. Uh, we would say R markdown. The reason is you can integrate uh, your text, R codes, outputs all in one document. Document. If you use LaTeX, let's suppose you want to produce, uh, you wrote your, uh, you're writing your thesis using LaTeX, and if you have an image, if you want to insert a plot, you have to generate the plot in a separate, uh, uh, using a separate software, and then after that, you have to call that into the uh, uh, LaTeX environment. But with our markdown, you can write the code on the document itself, and it will produce the output file. So the reproducibility is uh, pretty much 100% when it comes to our markdown Okay, thank you. Actually, we wish to uh, discuss the LaTeX template in next uh, research launch. So then, thanks. Children, you did a nice presentation. Then how difficult it is to get familiar with our markdown. We don't have any experience, and the yeah. 
everything is a learning curve. So sometimes it will take some time for you to, uh, normally whenever we try to learn new things, it will take some time for you to try and adjust to that platform. But uh, there are a lot, the art is a very well, is a well documented. So you can, there are a lot of resources out there that you can use in order to learn these concepts. So using this, those, all those materials, you can learn art very easy. And once you get used to that one, then you will start learning using these things quite frequently. For example, now for all, I, I use our markdown to create all my slides for my lectures. And I use our markdown to write, uh, create all my lecture materials. So once you get used to that one, you will start using it quite frequently. And another advantage is now, sometimes there can be situations where your PhD supervisor will not that familiar with our Magda, mm -hmm. but our Magda allows you to generate different types of outputs. So you can write your codes using our Magda, but then if you want an editable version, like if you want your content in a Word document, then you have that option that allows you to generate a Word document. So you can write all your codes using our markdown and you can just you can just get, you can generate a word document and you can pass that to your supervisor so that they can give the necessary um, uh, comments related to your content. Thanks. <laughs> to Mr. Toge to share your presentation and the uh, things you used here, materials. Yes, uh, we have uploaded all these materials that we used during this session to our website, so you can share the, uh, uh, this website to all other participants so that they can go through this work and learn. Uh, yeah. Yes, students, uh, do you have any questions? Uh, okay, the expert fans, uh, we wish to uh, contact you again with uh, Python uh, to discuss these things. And thank you so much for the valuable session that you have granted to us. We learned a lot. Our students will contact you. Uh, I'd be most grateful if you uh, kindly apply these students. So now, we are, now as our time has come to the end, we have got to conclude our today's session. Until we meet in our next research lounge, take care, goodbye.